everyone, my name is Brittany. Uh, I am your IAP1 instructor. Today we're going to be talking about Unit 4, um, introduc Introduction to Reporting and Documentation. So before we get started, I want to tell you a little bit, a little story. And I want to see, have a little bit of a class discussion and see what you guys think. So imagine this. You've just started your shift at the long-term care facility. You work as a casual. You haven't been back to the unit in a couple weeks. You walk in to see your first resident and realize it looks like the side of his face is a little drooped. What are you worried about? Stroke. Stroke. Good. You don't know how cute this is. You haven't been here in a couple weeks. Maybe something happened when you were gone. Or is this an emergency and we need to do something about it right now? When were they seen last? How do you know? Are they there still there? Did you ask her? No, they leave right at 7.30. Their shift is done, they leave. How do you find out? Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you check out the documentation, right? Your documentation will show you quite a bit about that person's story and we'll go through all the different important aspects of documentation in today's lesson. So our lesson objectives for today, you're, by the end, you're going to be able to identify the purpose of a healthcare record. You're gonna be able to describe the importance of documentation related to nursing practice and how it improves your own client care. You'll explain and apply legal guidelines for accurate documentation of client data and be able to demonstrate written documentation using a selected system and record keeping forms. So any questions right now before we move in? No, we're good. All right. So what type of things do we document as nurses? Everything. Everything. If it's not documented, it's not done. <laughs> How do we document? On paper. On paper. On the facility. On the facility. Paper, computer. It, are there certain rules that you have to follow for each documentation? Is it kind of just document willy-nilly? Do you write a whole story about what you did? It depends. Okay. Why do we document? To keep records. To keep records. Any other reason? Liability, patient safety. Good. Good. So, why do we keep records? Communication. As you saw in the story before, that communication between nurse to nurse or healthcare provider to healthcare provider is extremely important. Walking into that patient and seeing a change, regardless of when the last time you saw them was, it's important to know when that change happened, right? Especially when we're thinking about an emergency situation like a possible stroke, we need to know the last time they were seen normal the last time they were seen healthy okay? and that will actually change the treatment plan continuity of care you guys at this point have talked about nursing care plans but you know you're not the only ones that use the nursing care plans you're not the only nurse there's other nurses that come after you that have to take a look at those nursing care plans and be able to follow through you don't want to be doing the exact same thing that someone else has done if it doesn't work, right? We wanna make sure that we're following through on interventions to make sure that the clients get to that evaluation part that we want. Quality assurance and legal responsibility. You are all familiar with your BCCNP website at this point, which is the place to go for your standards. And this will give you a practice guideline for what your documentation at the bare minimum should look like. From there, your own personal facility, whether that's Fraser Health, Vancouver Coastal, will build on that and show you exactly how much more you should be doing, what the appropriate forms look like, that type of thing. But there's definitely a legal responsibility to it. For research, a lot of people don't tend to think about research, but we actually have research nurses that will go through, look at the charting and 
they document all different types of things. So they will look at the patient's status, they'll look at interventions that were done, and we can actually use this information to change our own practice and make sure that it's best practice. And for education, like you guys see, we'll bring some documentation into the classroom and you'll be able to actually look at it and learn from it. You can learn from other people's mistakes and learn how to make sure that we are better at documenting as we go through. Legal and professional. So as a registered nurse and a licensed practical nurse, you are held accountable and responsible for your actions. We are licensed through the province and you will be held legally answerable <coughs> for your actions. So whatever you do, you need to make sure that you're charting it. And we've talked before about how nursing is not, it's black and it's white, you're following orders. There's that critical thinking component that comes into it. So you need to be able to show you did your assessment, you recognized something was wrong, you did something about it and you followed through with it, right? So you are held legally accountable to those actions and those actions are thrown, shown through your documentation. The client record is a legal document and an accurate record must be maintained. In any event, any person, any patient, I should say, can go and request their documentation. So they are able to see exactly what you wrote. So you need to make sure that everything that you write is accurate, is factual, and is complete. Those records can also be pulled into a court of law if something were to ever happen. <coughs> if, there were, if there was an adverse event that happened and the patient got hurt, or there was a mistake that was made and something goes to court, usually happens in court multiple years later and you need to make sure that your documentation is completely bulletproof so that nothing so that you're covered in the event that you end up going to court any questions so far no no so a couple guidelines for quality documentation like i said your practice standards down here, Accreditation Canada and your provincial BCCNP, those set your practice standards. So make sure that you're having a look at those standards on your own time and you're following through with that every time we do documentation. High quality documentation and reporting needs to have six important characteristics. Like I mentioned before, it needs to be factual. You need to be actually writing the facts. I know that sounds obvious, but no opinions in there as well. You don't need to be, don't write, I think this is going on, or I feel the patient says they're having six out of 10 pain, but I think they're only at about a two, right? We report what the facts are, what we have. It needs to be accurate. Okay? If you're taking a blood pressure, you need to be writing exactly what those numbers were. If you're monitoring a heart rate, what was the range, the exact range? Okay? Don't oh, I forgot, I didn't write it down, you need to go back and take it again. Don't just make up a number, it needs to be accurate. Complete. Depending on the type of charting that you're doing, whether you're charting on your vital sign flow sheet or you're charting a narrative, you need to make sure that all of your documentation is complete. Don't leave any blank spaces. We'll talk in a different class about how to, uh, or we'll talk a little bit later about how to correct any blank spaces if you see that in your charting, how to make sure that your charting is complete. Even if you're not doing a full assessment, maybe you're not doing um, on that vital sign sheet, you're only doing from blood pressure to your heart rate, you're not actually checking in O2 sac because it's not required. We'll show you how to work through that so that your charting is still considered complete. It's current. You don't want to be leaving your charting until the end of your shift. Speaking from experience, anything can happen at the end of a shift. And if you leave that charting to the end, you're likely going to be rushed. It's not going to be complete. You're probably going to forget some things. And if anyone had come in 
and taken a look at the patient's chart halfway through the day, they won't have an accurate view of what the patient looks like because you haven't charted on them. You may do an assessment at eight o'clock. You don't chart that assessment until 7 p.m. The only thing that other healthcare providers have to go off of is what the previous shift did, which is not the most updated or current information. And you need to make sure it's organized. This will definitely take a little bit of practice to get your organization in check. But the best way that we'll talk about is we teach you your QPA and later on you'll learn a system, so a head to toe assessment. And if you document your findings in that order, it gives you an organized sense of the information. So you're not jumping from the patient was alert and oriented, the patient has not had a bowel movement in three days, the patient has a heart rate of 80, you're not going all over system to system, it makes sense and it's organized. Okay, so a couple charting do's. Be current, identify late entries if necessary. If something comes up and you can't chart right away, that's okay, it happens. We're busy, we're not sitting at the desk for most of the time, you get busy. The important thing is if you need to document a late entry that you mark it as such. We'll show you how to do that a little bit later. Make sure that you use the 24 hour clock. Are you guys familiar with the clocks? Yeah. I do recommend if you're not familiar with it, if it's not something that you've used before, switch your phones over. Because just getting in the habit of looking at it constantly, every time you check your phone, you get used to starting to think in that 24 hour clock. Be factual, objective and subjective data. So at this point, we've kind of talked about objective and subjective data. Do you guys, can someone give me an example of an objective data? Mm. The patient's blood pressure is 90 over 60. Perfect. Why is that objective? Because it's measurable. It's measurable. Good. How about subjective? 4 out of 10 pain. Why is that subjective? Because there's no way for us to accurately measure it. It's Good. just based off of their opinion. It comes from them. Perfect. You can use the patient's own words when it provides clarity. Patient states, I have four out of 10 pain. It feels like someone is sitting on my chest. You can document that because that clearly shows what that person's feeling at the time. Just make sure you put it in quotations and anyone coming through will be able to recognize that. Yes? What happens if the patient is swearing and it's like a mental health thing? So there's a couple of different schools of thought with the swearing. There's some nurses that will just write patient is agitated or patient is aggressive. Personally and in my own experience, I find that doesn't really give a whole picture. I actually will write what the person says. You write it in quotations, it's factual, it's honest, it's what the patient said. You're not swearing about the patient in your charting, you're actually saying specifically what this patient said. And I think showing what the person says, especially if they have that aggressive tendency, if for whatever reason, it actually gives a more accurate picture than just saying patient aggressive or patient aggressive plus plus. Good question. Don't repeat what's just been charted. Respiratory status remains unchanged. Um, this doesn't really show very much. Uh, it makes somebody have to go back in and look at what your initial assessment was. So if there's something that's been unchanged, depending on your facility policy, you may not write anything about it at all or write down your assessment again. Make sure that your handwriting is legible. This will also take a little bit of practice. It can be print or it can be cursive. It just needs to be able to be readable, not just by you, but by other people. Um, as you guys have seen with the charting, if something is unreadable, what are some errors that can occur? What do you guys think? Wrong meds. Wrong meds. Good. Anything else? 
you just not get the information because you can't read what's there. Exactly. How can you get an accurate representation of what the patient looks like if you can't even read what they did, right? So making sure that your handwriting is very legible. The other piece to that is if someone else can't read it, neither can the court of law, neither can the courts. So if you go and you sit in court and you say, oh no, that little squiggle there totally says that I did this, 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 and this, if nobody else can read it, then it doesn't count. Okay, so you need to make sure that your documentation is extremely legible. A lot of places, because we're doing that shift into online charting, it does take most of the handwriting portion away from it, but there are still times when you'll need to document by hand. So it's really important to make sure if your handwriting is not very clear, go home and practice it. <coughs> make sure that it has accurate spelling and grammar. Have you guys tried to spell medical terminology just off the top of your head? It's not so easy. Some of them are fine, others are extremely difficult. If you don't know how to spell something, do we just write like a quick little cursive? And pretend we've got all the letters in there? What do you guys think? Well, that wouldn't be accurate. Nope. So what would you like to do instead? Probably look it up. Look it up. We have so much access to information just at the touch of our fingers, whether there's a computer at work, or whether you have your phone, or there's a drug book, or usually most nursing units also have a terminology book somewhere, right? Look it up, make sure that you're spelling it correctly. There's a lot of diagnoses, there's a lot of medications that sound alike, that look alike, that if you make an error, just because you're not totally sure what it looks like, it can be taken completely different. So you need to make sure that your documentation is very, very clear. Using correct medical terminology. So, if I've got an issue on my right big toe, and like that leg on that side, the big one, not super clear, okay? Using the actual terminology of the area that you're working with. And sometimes it takes a little bit of practice. You'll have to look up exactly where you're looking at, but that helps be extremely clear, especially when we're talking about wounds or dressings or anything like that, we wanna know exactly where on the body it is. Make sure that you fill out your signature sheets. How often do we sign the signature sheets? Those are the main ones in the front of the chart or something in the chart that just show what your name is and your signature. How often do we sign those? It's the first time you take care of the patient? Yes, that's it. That's it. You don't need to go back and sign it. If your name's in there, your name's in there. It's documented somewhere. Okay, so every time you go in for a shift, you don't need to go back in and sign that signature sheet. Make sure that you sign all of your entries appropriately. So at the end of your narrative documentation, you should have your first initial, your last name, and then for you guys, because you're nursing students, VCCSPN, Vancouver Community College Student Practical Nurse. It's a lot of letters, you're gonna be using it for all four levels, just get used to putting it in there, okay? Like I said before, make sure that you're organized. You should be clustering related data. Try and put neuro things together, cardiac things together, respiratory things together. Always use <coughs> black ink. There's been a huge push for this, because before it used to be black and blue, both were okay. There's some places that still use red ink in certain areas. Why do you think black ink is the end all for documentation? Easier for photocopying. Yes. So what we've been seeing is especially those areas, and I worked the ICU where I used to work, we would document one set of blood pressures in red. And what we were finding was when that actually got sent to be put into medical records, the red wasn't showing up at all. So all of our documentation was completely blank. It showed we did nothing for days, weeks. We did no blood pressures because it was all documented in red. 
So this is huge. You, going out into clinical, you may see other colors. You may see blue, you may see red, but you as practical student nurses, we teach you best practice. So we absolutely expect you to only be using black pen. Use of facility acceptable abbreviations. In the front of every patient's chart, there is now a list of accepted abbreviations. They're pretty consistent across the board now. And this has been used to make sure that there's no errors when documenting or when writing orders. A lot of the times, especially physicians are usually pretty bad for this, they'll make up little acronyms in their head and then they write them down and you're going, I have no idea what that means. <laughs> You'll look it up and it means something totally different. It doesn't make sense in the context. So then you end up needing to call them and say, what does this mean? So make sure that if you are abbreviating anything, you're using an appropriate abbreviation. If you're not sure if there is an appropriate abbreviation, what can you do? Ask. Ask who? Somebody. <laughs> Just go without an abbreviation. Go without, yeah. Some places do have, um, Fraser Health, for instance, has an area on their, um, their intranet where you can go in and you can look up abbreviations and see if it's appropriate. But if your facility doesn't have something like that and you're not sure, just don't use one, right? It goes back to making sure that your documentation is extremely clear and accurate. Errors. So the way that we create correct errors, and we're all human, you're gonna make a mistake. And if you only make one, that's pretty impressive. Um, but there's an appropriate way to correct errors when it comes to legal documentation. Uh, this was a huge culture change for me. I'm certainly one person where if I make a mistake on a note to my friend, I scribble it out until you can't read it at all. You cannot do that. When it comes to errors in a legal documentation, it is a single black line through the word. You write error over top and you initial. We need to be able to see what that said. Okay. If you scribble it out, what does it look like? You tried to cover up something. And it could be something that you're not, you just spelled the word wrong. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I spelled blood pressure wrong, right? It still needs to be a single line across, right error and initial. So we know we can still read what it was initially and recognize that, oh, that was just a quick error. We signed it, okay? Clear so far? Yeah, any questions? No? Okay. Charting don'ts. So we talked about this waiting until the end of the shift to, sh to chart. Um, it's not a good idea. Just get into the habit. Even if you take five minutes at a time, go sit down, chart something, right? If you go and take a blood pressure, keep a notebook um, on you, especially when you guys first start. Take it out into clinical. <coughs> if you need the room, you can write down exactly what your stuff was. Go and chart it right away. Before someone can pull you aside to go help with another bed bath, or someone can pull you aside because we need help with this medication, go and chart it because there is a high likelihood that you'll forget or you'll end up getting smushed at the end, trying to cram everything in, and then you're gonna forget something. Don't chart for someone else or have them do your charting. Chart your own actions only. Why do you think this one's important? Liability. Liability. If I chart, if you tell me, hey, I just gave so-and-so 650 milligrams of Tylenol, and I go and chart that, what does it look like? that I gave it, right? You're the one who gave that. I wasn't there when you gave it. I didn't see you give it. I'm not gonna chart for you. You have to come and chart, okay? Don't speculate or guess. Well, patient says they're having six out of 10 pain, but they're sitting there and texting on their phone. Pretty sure they're probably more out of two, right? This isn't facts. This isn't accurate. You're assuming something, okay? And a legal documentation has no room for speculation or guessing. Okay. 
Don't preach her. Yes. Uh, are what about like um, object writing the objective stuff? So, quote, they say they're at nine out of ten pain, excruciating pain, but then you write patient is sitting, texting, seems calm, not grimacing, like stuff, the objective things that you can actually tell. Is that fine? So the way that you write it is important. If you document it as you're just giving an objective, so patient states they're having nine out of 10 pain, it feels like this, they are currently sitting there, blood pressure is this, heart rate is this, rest rate is this, they don't appear to be in any type of stress or distress, you can document like that. But I wouldn't go in and say, I think they're probably about a two, or they're probably not having any pain. Does that make sense, the mm -hmm. little difference? Um, Pre-charting. So you guys will definitely see this when you go out into field. It is something that we struggle with all the time. You'll watch, especially in level one, you'll buddy with a carry. The carry will go in and we'll sign off for everything right at the beginning of the shift. Yep. Patient's totally fine, check, 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 check. And then they go in and actually see their patient for the first time. It's very frustrating. And like I said, what you guys see in clinical is obviously not what we expect from you guys, okay? Pre-charting, you should absolutely not be charting on your patient before you actually assess them, right? This goes hand in hand as well with your medication administration. If you sign off, I've given this medication, you walk in, you go to hand them their medication and they throw it across the room. Does it show that you've given it? Did you actually get it? No, okay. Make sure, especially when we get into medication administration, there are ways to show that you've poured the medication, but you haven't actually given it yet. That gives you that fallback just in case something happens when you're inside the room. Don't be a snoop with medical documents. This is actually illegal. And you, there's been a lot of stuff in the news recently, past couple of years about, especially with the online charting and the online charts, people just going in and looking at other people's charts. Don't look up your own. Don't look up your friends. Don't look up your families. If you are directly taking care of that patient or your buddy's patient you're covering on shift, totally fine. You are absolutely, you are a part of the team at that point. You are able to go in and look at the patient's charts. But if you look at your own, if you look at a patient that's on another floor, just because you're wondering how they're doing, you'll get flagged, okay? You're not a part of the team. And that's actually actually a breach of confidentiality at that point, which is a huge legal deal, okay? So just make sure that before you start going into people's charts or you're looking in for information, actually think to yourself, is it appropriate that I'm in here? Is it relevant that I'm looking at their information? Okay? And as always, you can use the BCCNP standards as a guide. Okay, some more charting don'ts. Don't erase or use correction blue tape. I know that there are pens out there that you can erase. Don't buy them, just leave them at the store. Actually purchase regular pens. How do we correct an error? Single line. Single line and? Error. Initial. Error and initial, okay? So all three of those components need to be in it. Whether it's a single word, whether it's a whole paragraph and you realize, oh shoot, I'm charting on a different patient. Okay, it all needs to have that single line through it so that we can read and you write error and your initial. Good. If it's a full paragraph, do you have to say why you crossed out a full paragraph? It depends on the facility. Sometimes you can just write off to the side, wrong patient's chart. So that makes it clear, oh, this doesn't have anything to do with this patient. Um, don't scribble out an entry or try to write over top. You'll find I have some practice documentation for you guys. Those lines are pretty little. So if you kind of scratch over top and you're trying to write really small above, it's not, it's no longer legible, okay? Don't leave any blank spaces. So when it comes to documentation, 
you want to make sure that you're going all the way to the end. Sometimes words don't work so well. They don't line up perfectly. So you end up needing to start over here. What do you do if you've got a huge blank space here? What do you guys think? Single line error. Initial. <laughs> but a single line works. Why do you want to make sure that you're not leaving any blank spaces? So if it gets copied, it doesn't look like it was whited out? Possibly. Because people can't document in the blank spaces. Bingo. You want to make sure that there's no place on your documentation where someone can go back in and change it. That includes you, that includes anybody. Right? So make sure that there's no extra white spaces on either side or within your paragraph. Okay, good. Don't use pencil. What do we use? Black pen. Black pen, good. Don't make judgmental statements about the clients or your colleagues. Ah, oh, my shift report is late because my colleague showed up late, so I didn't have a chance to go for break until 10. Is that relevant to the patient's care? Don't state mistakes that were made by others. Chart on the client status only. If there's an error that you've recognized, that you found, we do have other systems in place to report that. Do you guys know what those are called? It looks like you're making P it Yeah. <laughs> PLS? P P PLS, yeah, PSLS, PLS, depending on the system. Good. So those places are specifically there to document errors. And we use those to learn from them. We've gotten away from the punitive system. We really just want to see errors to see if there's a way that we can grow from it. If there's a systematic thing that we can put in place or a safety thing that we can put in place to make sure that it doesn't happen again. But all that's relevant to the client is how the client's doing. Okay, so if there's an error that's been made, Absolutely, you wanna make sure that the client is okay, that the client status is okay, and you would document that, that you've gone back in and you've checked on them. But you don't need to write in the client's status or in the client chart, error made by previous nurse, PSLS filled out. <coughs> okay, because those are two completely different um, systems. Don't make generalizations or assumptions. Again, it goes back to making sure that everything you talk about is factual, is accurate, complete. Okay. So what do we chart? Any type of problem. Again, this, what you chart will depend on your facility, will depend on your unit specific. Okay, so make sure that you're reading those standards and following through with your policies. But generally, any type of problem. Okay, if, there's, if you walk in, if there's any issue, person's having difficulty breathing, you're gonna talk, you're gonna document that. Any vitals that you do, your beginning of the shift assessment, how you found them, what did they look like? Were they safe when you got in there? Were they on the floor from a fall? Okay. Any changes in client condition? So when you went back in at 12 o'clock, something's different. Do your assessment and document those changes. Any new issues and problems? Medication administration. You guys will get a chance. We won't practice med admin documentation today. You'll do that in your med admin class, but that's also a part of that legal documentation. Your activities of daily living flow sheets. Any new orders that you have implemented. If you SBAR your physician and they give you new orders, you need to document that those orders were started, when they were started how you went about it. And if any other health professionals have been contacted or consulted, okay, if you noticed that your patient is starting to get a pressure ulcer on their sides from sitting in the wheelchair too long, right? Oh, I sent in uh, a consult to OT, see if we can get a new wheelchair fitted for them or some cushioning on either side, okay? That shows you did your assessment, you noticed something was wrong, and you followed through on it, okay? All right, let's practice. So what I have for you here is an example of documentation. I want you to take a couple minutes and circle any issues that you see.
<laughs> yeah, I'm getting that feeling too. Well, I'm gonna ask you how many you found, so. Oh. Well then. <laughs> Oh, well, there's lots. I don't think there is a sentence in here that that is actually appropriate. Yeah. All right, let's work through it together. Cool. How many did you guys find? Well, some like group in together. There's like the misspelled words and stuff, but as part of a larger sentence, that's bad. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's go through. What did you guys find? Who's D? Uh, okay. But you're right. It's not clear that that's data. It's just a random D that's kind of put there. Right? Okay. The first sentence is a very objective with multiple exclamation points and very professional. No, not so much, eh? Walked into Shelly's room and she has puked all over her bed. Do you think puked is the right term there? No. No, what do you guys think? Vomited. Vomited? It's a little bit more professional. And it's... Wouldn't you want, like, a rough quantity, too? Good. Yeah, for sure. I'd want to know just how much. And right? describe it. Were there, like, coffee grounds looking in it? Was it bloody? Good. Very good. Marilyn, Shelly's roommate, whom she doesn't really like, is holding her nose and making a face. Irrelevant. Irrelevant. Completely irrelevant. Tina, RCA, said Shelly also puked an hour ago. Oops! 30 minutes ago. They didn't write error in initial. No, they got the line in though. It's also talking about somebody else's assessment and unprofessional. Good, unprofessional, someone else's assessment. What do you think about the oops? Unprofessional. Unprofessional, right? The bed really looks disgusting and needs to be So should just be changed. It doesn't need to be stated. It should just okay. be done. Well, do we even need to state that the bed needs to be changed? No. Like it shouldn't it, it yeah, it doesn't need to be stated. Like it should just be done. Okay. What does BN BM stand for? I'm sure there's a bowel movement in there, but I don't know what the BN <laughs> stands for. It actually in this particular case, but not by me. Uh. <laughs> do you think that's an approved abbreviation? No, not so much, eh? Shelly is complaining that this always happens after surgery, and she is begging for some gravel because she thinks it is the only med that works for her. <clears throat> what do you guys think about that? Misspelled word. It's judgmental. Misspelled word. Right? It's not this, precise. It's not precise. Yeah. Right? So just saying she is begging for some gravel because she thinks it's the only med that works for her. I completely agree. I think that comes across as extremely judgmental. Right? Yeah, every other class is made fun of me because I actually read this out. Everything else is fine. <laughs> Had other classes that go, dear God, Britt, don't ever say that again. <laughs> Misspelled word again, right? Misspelled and word. also, it doesn't actually say what's fine. It's just a generalized, everything's good. Like, it doesn't show that you actually assess the patient. And then there's a large blank line after it. Good. Large blank line right here, right? What would you want to do there? Draw a line. You could draw a line. Good. Make sure that there's no blank spaces. A nurse Shane gave her an injection of gravel because I went on my break. We are short staffed today. I know you're grimacing. <laughs> <laughs> it's very painful, right? You can clearly see. Now this is obviously an exaggerated example, but you can clearly see how unprofessional documentation can look, right? If you think, like, as nurses, we are um, licensed, we are regulated by a licensing body, we are considered professionals. This doesn't look professional, right? 
I'll just point out just a couple of other ones here. Um, so how about this? What do you guys think about that? I like the one-ish better. The one-ish, yeah, up here it says one-ish. <laughs> Friday, September 3rd, around one. What do you think about those numbers though? Should be 24 hour clock. 24 hour, good. Okay, and then we've got, let's see. Uh, Shelly, less grumpy, <laughs> says she feels better, wants something to drink. I gave her a big glass of apple juice. Turned on the TV so she could watch her favorite show, The Bold and the Beautiful. Karen, smiley face. Appropriate? No. Professional? No. Relevant? Some of it. There's a better way to do it, for sure. So who is the patient here? D. Shelly. Whose chart are we on? Well. Sorry, we said circle the whole thing. <laughs> That's actually a tricky one. There's been a few classes that have got that one right off the bat. That's a tricky one because so many people tend to skip over that, right? But that's considered a charting error. Okay. All right. So we agree this is not a great example. So what does a good example look like? So. I have blank sheets here for you. At the top is a list of information. I would like you to document how you think we could change this to make it more professional, more relevant, okay? and follow your legal standards as a nurse. Can you give us a time? Can you use the time? Um, yeah, so you can use the time right now because that's when we're documenting. What's the date? <laughs> July 3rd. Whatever you think about it. What are we up to? <laughs>
<laughs> so we're gonna do a little post assessment here and see how well this isn't for grades right <laughs> all right so take a look at your partner's documentation and see how well they did you can write them little notes on there so this is something that you can take home from this we're all learning Right? Documentation is a skill. It's going to take a really long time to get used to it and to do it properly. Okay? So take some time, read over your partner's work, see if there's anything you would have done differently, any information that they missed, anything they wrote that wasn't relevant. Oh yeah, there's a lot of errors in there. <laughs> <laughs> so when you guys are actually documenting, you need to make sure that you're following those six guiding principles, right? You're actually thinking back, is this factual? Is it accurate? Is it complete? Is it organized? Okay, following your standards. Making sure that every time that you document, it actually follows those principles. When it comes to documentation, there's no this way is the only right way to do it. You could ask any of the nursing instructors to write this information in a documentation pattern and we would all write it differently. Okay, as long as you're following those guidelines, you're fine. Okay, and when you guys get out into clinical, we're going to work with you and tweak it, tweak it, tweak it a little bit. Sorry, I stumbled a little bit. Um, I find especially when you first start, you want to throw every bit of information in there as possible. I have so much information from the assessment that I just spent an hour with them. I have so much information to write down. Actually weeding through it and thinking about is it relevant to the patient's document. Okay, so when we do these documentation exercises, and we'll do it from here on out, every time we have an assessment class, we'll be doing documentation with it. Okay, so you'll get practice all throughout the semester and then when you go out into clinical, you'll get even more practice. Every single day, you'll sit down with your instructor and you'll write out documentation. And we'll be constantly giving you guys feedback because it is a skill. It's going to take a while, okay? Especially if you come from any type of program where you write lengthy papers, it's getting away from the the the's and the and's and the a's and making it short and concise okay do you guys have any questions no any feedback all right do you guys want to swap the papers back so your, your partner has them and from here we're going to go up to the lab all right that's it